the Damon Runyon Theater. Once again, the Damon Runyon Theater brings you another story by the master storyteller, Damon Runyon. And this one, The Lacework Kid. And to tell it to you, here is Broadway. Thanks. Well, maybe you never hear of The Lacework Kid, who is called that because when he shuffles and deals a deck of cards, it is just like lace falling from his fingers. He makes his living traveling on trains and boats and using his skill with the pasteboards. I know him very well until the war separates us, and I do not see him until a few nights ago, when I am sitting in Mindy's, and who comes in but the lacework kid? Well, well, long time no see, Broadway. Of all people, the lacework kid. Ah, not anymore. Huh? What is not anymore? The lacework kid. You mean you are making a legitimate living now? Broadway. Well, when I got out of the army, I took a job. Fact is, I'm in New York on business. You, you take a job? Yep, I'm through with the cards. You give up a fine career? Why? It's a long story. I have got all night. Okay. I... Hey, where's old Kidney Foot, the waiter? He's around someplace waiting on tables. You know, he taught me to play gin rummy. Oh, he does? Yeah, and I'm glad he did, because knowing how to play it saved my life when I was a prisoner during the war. Gin rummy saves your life? Oh. Well, settle back, Broadway. I'll tell you all about it. Well, the lace work kid settles back and tells me a story which is strange indeed. In fact, it is so strange that I laid a check, and I find out it is true. And what that story is, I will tell you in a minute. And now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, The Lacework Kid. The kid tells me how he gets to be a sergeant in the Air Force and his waist gunner in a flying fortress when it is severely jostled by anti-aircraft shells. The kid has to bail out with the rest of the crew, but he lands by himself out in the middle of no place. He is just trying to find his way out when the scene is as follows. Hunt! 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 Okay, Kraut, you got the gun, I ain't. Leipzig! Ah, oh, you speak German. Do the Einziger? On right, hold the mustard. Huh? Look, crowd, I... Shunt! That, I take it, means for me to freeze where I am, huh? Americana, yeah. American, yeah. Is there a line? Oh, you don't understand English, huh? You lousy Nazi rat. Quick! Now, I know that means shut up. Stand! Herr Leutnant! Herr Leutnant! Bitte kommen Sie hier! Herr Leutnant! Uh, tell you what, crowd, you put that gun down and we'll play a game. Bleib stehen! Herr Leutnant! Well, what is? Herr Leutnant, der Amerikaner kommt aus Luftschiff. Das weiß ich schön. Ah. Ja, Herr Leutnant. Hey, I know you. Be quiet. Are you the only one? Yeah. All right. Get in front of us and walk that way. Okay, jump. Okay. But I know you. Your name is Schultz and you... I... <laughs> be quiet. Now move and be very careful. <laughs> The kid tells me that the two crowds make him march ahead of them. Then when they are out a little piece, the Nazi lieutenant tells the other Heine to move ahead. Then he says as follows to the kid. It is a long time since I saw you last, eh? Yeah, it is, Schultze. Leutnant Schultz. The last time I saw you, you were a steward on a liner, staring suckers at me for a measly little cut. <laughs> Times change. And they will change even more, kid. Meaning what? I will never be a steward again. Because we of the Fatherland will be the masters. Yeah, looks like you got steered for a sucker this time, Schultz. Don't talk like that. Okay. Where are we going? So far as you are concerned, my friend, the war is over. Oh. Prison camp, huh? Detention camp. Until mm. we can send you to the right place. Where? Who knows? <laughs> I never expected to see the lace for a kid in a uniform. I figured dropping a few eggs might slow you guys up. From what I can, it did. We will never give up. Never. Oh, so you've been thinking about it, huh? Shut up. Sure, sure. You will tell me something, kid. You know a thing? I said you will tell me something. Look, Schultz, uh, 
Lieutenant, you ought to know I won't open my yap about anything. All I know is name, rank, serial number. I don't want to know anything like that. No. There is something else I wish to know. Oh? What's on your mind? Are you still so very clever with your hands at card playing? Uh, I keep up with the times. Why? Can you play gin rummy? <laughs> Any moron can play it. Do you play it well? Who can't? 95% luck, the other five is skill. I can teach any dumb animal to play gin if I can get it to hold ten cards. I do not mean that. I meant, can you play to win and win only? What? I don't get you, Lieutenant. Never mind now. I will explain later. We are almost at the camp. Now, walk ahead. And if you let on that you know me, I will see that you are shot while trying to escape. Well, this does not sound good to the lacework kid. As he tells me, it sounds like Lieutenant Schultz has got something up his sleeve besides a knife. Anyway, the kid is put in a little house with some other guys who were captured, and is not long before he is talking with an English captain and gets the lowdown on the detention camp. I'm sorry you were brought here, Sergeant. Huh? Why? Oh, no one's told you? Well, I just got here. I ain't had time to case a joint. I, I beg your pardon? Uh, I mean, I ain't looked over the place yet. Oh, have you ever heard of the butcher? Uh, sounds like a nice citizen. Who's he? Colonel von Seidberg. Still don't mean a thing. Well, he was in charge of the Polish camps at the start of the war. Polish camps? Uh, that's what they were called, but the uh, so-called scientists of Nazi Germany used them for experimental purposes. Oh, they're real nice people, these little Nazi playmates. Oh, delightful. But uh, what about the butcher? Well, he originated a form of Nazi culture called making the world safe for the Aryans. He killed 10,000 men, women, and children in five days. Oh, that's a pretty good score, even for a Nazi. He's in charge of this camp. I see. But it seems to me that I hear that when any Nazi does a good thing for the fatherland, like what you said, he gets to be at least a general or... Gets close enough to Hitler to look at him through a pane of glass? Uh, the butcher bungled one job and they sent him here as punishment. Oh, so it's tough here, huh? Yes, it is. In some strange, indirect way, the butcher likes to blame us for his exile. Uh-huh, I get it. Any way out of here? Escape? Yeah. Look out of that window. So? What's out there? A barbed wire fence, electrically charged. You just touch it and... Oh. Every one of those guards you see is a born killer filthy sadists who use any excuse to further the glory of the fatherland and the Fuhrer. At our expense. Our lives. Uh, and what's worse, our self-respect. Yeah, I see. I see. A guy'd be better off dead than here. Well, that's what we thought at first. Even suicide seemed a good way out, but... But? Well, why give the Nazis the satisfaction? I guess you've got a point. Well, I'm... Careful. Here comes a guard. That's the guy who helped bring me in. Achtung! Sergeant, you better get to your feet. Stand up for him. Please. Achtung! Achtung! Huh. One I owe you, Kraut. Sergeant O'Shea? Me. Come. Where to? Go with him, Sergeant. I... Okay. See you later, Captain. Yes, and good luck, old man. Thanks. Okay, Superman, let's go. <laughs> Well, the kid does not know where the crowd has taken him, but he thinks he's going to be asked a lot of questions. Because at that time, the Nazis are beginning to come loose around the edges. Their fatherland is breaking up, and Mr. Hitler seems like a bad deal. So the kid figures they want information about the Air Force for a last stab. He and the Nazi walk across the yard to a little house that stands back a piece. The Nazi knocks on the door. Yeah? Der Amerikaner, Herr Leutnant. Das ist alles. Ja, Herr Leutnant. Come in, Sergeant O'Shea. And how is Sergeant O'Shea this evening? Ah, oh, why be so formal, Schultze? Call me kid. You know, if it suited me, I could have you shot. No, not really. Or perhaps worse. Yeah. Now, look, you didn't get me here to tell me what games you could play. Now, what do you want? I need you, or I would not let you talk to me this way, not for a second. Sure. 
I did not say you could be seated. I'm tired. <laughs> I cannot tell whether this is courage or bravado. I don't know what that last word means, but if it means I ain't afraid of you and your pack of weasels, okay. I need you. Like or... I said before, the only questions I answer are Sergeant O'Shea, serial number 320. You are wrong, kid. No. I need your, uh, your skill. Huh? I remember on the boats, you were quite clever. Very talented. Thanks. I will get to the point. Might as well. Our commandant here is Colonel von Seidborg. Sure. Better known as the Butcher. Shut up. Okay. Get on with your story, Schultz. I will. You have one chance to make things easy for yourself here. Yeah? Go on. You will play Gin Rummy with the Colonel. Go over that again, Schultz. I heard some wrong notes. You will play Gin Rummy with Colonel von Seidborg. You're kidding. I am serious. Either you will do it, or I can promise some very unpleasant moments. Even ours. Yeah, I guess you can. Okay, you want me to play gin rummy with the butcher. Now, why? A very good reason. I will tell you. And what Schultze tells the lacework kid is something for the books. And it leads... Ah, but that is getting a little bit ahead of the rest of the story. Which I will finish telling you in a minute. And now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, The Lacework Kit. Like the kid tells me, Schultze wants him to play gin rummy with Colonel von Seidberg. And the reason why comes out as the scene goes on, as follows. It is a very strange reason. It's gotta be. I hate him. Oh... It is a dog's life, and he makes it so. For his failure, he blames us, all of us. But that is neither here nor there. Play him and beat him. How good a game does he play? Very good. Maybe I can't beat him. You are very clever with cards. Look, Schultze, poker, faro, even casino, there's a chance for talent. But in gin rummy, no. You must beat him. Why? I have my reasons. You didn't tell me why I gotta beat him. I told you. I would tell you why you should play him, not why you should beat him. Do we play for dough? Yes. And I'll beat before I start. I got no dough. And I don't think the colonel will take my marker if I lose. You will have money. All you need. From where? I have some. My comrades have some. We will give to you. you, you you'll give me dough to play against the butcher? You take 25% of what you win. The rest comes back to me. Understand? Yeah, I get that part, but there's just one more question. Now what is it? How come you picked Gin Rummy, and how come you picked me? I will answer that. It is because no one else plays a game here. Oh. The colonel learned it in America when he was an attaché in Washington. He has become, uh, what you call... I get it, a fiend. Yeah. yeah, I know a lot of guys and dolls like that. Once they learn the game, they got to play it all the time. Yeah. Now, that's all for tonight. Tomorrow night, you will begin to play. All right. But there's just one other thing. Nothing else. We will go now. Uh-uh. Now. You got your reasons for wanting the butcher taken to the cleaners. I don't know whether I can do it or not, but you want it and want it bad, right? So? So I'll play. Providing you give the boys in prison house a break. They are prisoners of war. They're people. Inferior people. Okay, then you get a superior people to play gin with the butcher. You are a fool. I could have you shot, tortured. Go ahead. You'd lose the only guy who can do you any good, whatever it is. I will see what I can do. You know what you can do. Deal, Schultz? I will try. No, you will go back. And remember, Sergeant O'Shea, you must beat the colonel. Or... <laughs> or there'll be a lot of guys shot while escaping. Huh? Exactly. Perhaps all of them. <laughs> So, the kid agrees to play the colonel. He tips off the rest of the prisoners. But nobody seems to know why Schultze wishes the butcher cleaned out. Then it comes up the next night. A guard comes and gets the kid. Schultz takes over, and on the way to the colonel's house, Schultz gives out as follows. Now you will remember, he is a good player. You will use anything to beat him. I told you, Schultz, I'll do my best. Where's the dough? Here. 900 mark. Uh, how much is that in money? 
It is money. Okay, how much in American? About $360. What stakes does he play for? Very high. What if I lose this? There is more, but not too much more. All right. These are his quarters. Yeah, all right. The Americana, Herr Oberst. Good. Yes. Yeah, ja, Herr Oberst. Come here. You are young. Old enough. And the American army, you are not taught to say, sir? Uh, yes, sir. Sit down. Lieutenant Schultz has told you. Told me what, Colonel? That I wish you to play General Army with me. He told me. Uh, sir. Good. He's a fool, a stupid fool. He wants to be a captain. He is a common person and he wants to be a captain. Well, he will not. You know who I am? Uh, Colonel Von Seidberg. The name means nothing? No. You know what a Junker is? No. I do not expect you to. I do not expect an American to know anything so so. A Junker is a man, a great man, a gentleman, a soldier. You know what that means? I think so. You do not. I, a Junker, out here on this godforsaken spot when I should be commanding my regiment for the borderland. Schultz, he is a common person. He belongs here on the dung heap. He belongs here with the swine and the filth and the garbage. All of you do. And I will put you there. All of you. I will... <laughs> Look at him. Heinrich von Seidburg talking like this to a pig. That shows what I have come to. Lieutenant Schultz said you uh, wanted to play Gin Rami. Ah, you play well? I get by. We will see. You have money? 900 marks. Where did you get it? Oh, around and about. Oh, no matter. Here. Here's the cards. Uh-huh. You shuffle them well. Quite expertly. I've... I've played a lot. I see. Ah, you shuffle them very, very expertly. I will have to keep my eyes on you, Nick Dwarf. Cut for deal? Yeah. Your deal? Yeah. We will play three games across. When we are on all three games, we start another three. We play for 100 marks a game, gins and undercuts, 20 each, Schneider's double, understood? Yeah, it's pretty steep. Afraid, American? No. Then let us play. <laughs> And so the game begins. The kid says the butcher is by no means a rank sucker and has more than a good share of luck. They play for six hours, and the kid at the end of that time is down over 400 marks. Then they quit for the night, and Schultz takes the kid back to the prison house. On the way over, he says, You are an idiot, a fool. Look, if you get the right tickets in gin, you're a genius. If you do not, you're a bum. There are other ways. Sure. That guy's got eyes like a hawk. He ain't a sucker. Shows he's half. You have got to beat him. If I get the tickets, I will. Make sure of it. Just what is your reason, Schultze? None of your business. I am putting up the stakes. I am backing you. So are my comrades. Lace work. It is not good if you continue to lose. Oh, so I'm on a spot, huh? You may call it that. There ain't another word for it. You will play again tomorrow night? Yeah. Starting at 8 o'clock. You will need more money. Looks like it. I'll get it for you. Okay, but... But what? Nothing. Very well. Now get back in the prison house. So the next night, the kid and the butcher play again. And the next night, and the next. For a whole week they play, and the kid keeps losing. Now suddenly, the kid's luck turns. He begins to win night after night. Then it is one night several weeks later, and the scene is as follows. I get down with four. Four? They're flicked. I wait for one card, just one card. What's your count? Fifteen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes twelve games for me. Three blitzes. What does it come to? In money? What else, you idiot? Let me see. Nine hundred. Three. It's fifteen hundred marks. Fifteen hundred, yeah. Fifteen hundred. Want to go another three frames? No, no, not tonight. Okay. Fifteen hundred, you owe me. 
I said you're down for 1,500 marks, Colonel. You're afraid I will not pay? Did I say that, uh, sir? Yes, yes, you did. It's the way you said it. Didn't mean to. I pay my debts as a Junker should. Do you believe a one side book would not pay? All I said was you're down 1,500. Yes. Well, you... You will wait till tomorrow night? You mean to play again or to pay me... You know what I mean, you swine. You mean you want to give me an I.O.U.? I give you my word. On paper. Do you know what you just said? Sure. You told me my word was no good. I should have you killed for that. Oh, is that the way a yunker settles his debts? Has the guy killed? You swine! You swine! You're the boss here, Colonel. You can push me around or anybody else all you want. But that won't make you any prouder of being a Junker or a von Seidberg. Maybe the news of how you had a guy killed because you couldn't pay off will get around. Maybe even back to Berlin to Hitler right, and the right. like. I will give you my note for 1,500 marks. Okay with me. It will be honored. Uh, I will honor it. Here. Thanks. Now get out. Get out! You! Yes, sir. You're a fool. Yeah? Why? Get out! Oh, she? Get! Huh? Oh, Schultz. What happened? I took him again. 1,500 marks. Got his marker for it. Ah, good, good. <laughs> Now you will have to borrow money again from me and my comrade. Huh? You mean the, the dough I went from him, he borrows from you guys? Yeah, each one of us has his note. Wait a minute, that, that don't make sense. You lend him dough so he can play with me, lose to me, then I give some of it back to you and he borrows it all over again? Where's the percentage in that for you? My percentage will come not from money, but from his Junker pride. I... <laughs> Hey, somebody's shooting! What is Sooner than I expect! What is it? That's one shoes! Look at him, Boston! Ich mach das selbst! Jawohl, Herr Lieutenant! You come with me, kid! Holy mackerel! Huh. Shot himself right through the head. The only way an honorable Junker could settle his debts. <laughs> Now I am even with him, and I did not have to raise a hand. Oh, so that's why you wanted me to play him. Yeah? Look, on the floor, under the table, the nine of diamonds. So? What about it? A very bad card. In fact, some people who are superstitious consider it the death card. <laughs> So that is the story the lacework kid tells me, up to a point. However, that is not the end. The payoff is even stranger than the story. And what it is, I will tell you in a minute. The kid gets to the point where he tells me what the butcher does. Then he says... Sure, he knocked himself off. He knew that when the story got around about him touching the common soldiers for dough, he'd be purged. Yeah, I see. But what about you and, and the rest of the guys? <laughs> uh, the master race didn't mind making a few bucks. I bribed the guards to let the gates open one night. Bribed them with their own money I won from the butcher. <laughs> that is what they call poetic justice, huh? <laughs> yeah, I guess it is. Well, I gotta be going Broadway. Like I said before, I'm only in New York on business. Uh, legitimate. Uh-huh. Well, good luck, Lace. Uh, I mean, Mr. Roche. Thanks. Be seeing you again sometime, Broadway. Yeah, so long, kid. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Yeah? What's the matter, Broadway? You say the butcher never takes his eyes off your hands. Hmm? In which case, how do you manage to take him to the cleaners if his luck is so good? Oh, uh, I guess his luck, uh, didn't hold. So long. Yeah, so long, kid. See you around. Hey, Broadway. Oh, hiya, kidney foot. Hi. Hey, give me a cup of coffee, will you? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, but, uh, ain't that the lacework kid I seen you talking to? The same. Ain't seen him around for a long time. He, um, uh, he quits the, uh, business he's in. Oh, too bad. He is a very good mechanic. And from what he tells me, a great gin rummy player. Huh? <laughs> he 
you kidding? Hey, he's a rank sucker at it. I know, because I teach him the game a long time ago. Oh? He's a rank sucker, huh? Sure. Oh, there ain't much chance for him to use his educated fingers and gin. So I teach him a trick that gives him a big advantage over an opponent. Advantage? Trick? What trick, Kidneyfoot? Why, you never, never try to draw for a certain card, but your opponent does. I do not get it. Broadway, Broadway. All you gotta do is accidentally on purpose drop a card under the table. Any card you know. Like, like, for example, the nine of diamonds? The death card? Sure, any card. Oh, why'd you say the nine of diamonds is special? Only because it seems to me that is a particularly special card. In a certain case. <laughs> And so ends the famous Damon Runyon story, The Lacework Kid. Listen in again next week for... The Damon Runyon Theater. The Damon Runyon Theater with John Brown as Broadway is directed by Richard Sandville and the story is adapted for radio by Russell Hughes. Vern Carstensen is in charge of production. This is a Mayfair production. (laughs) ¶¶